because the map is on your... Oh, by the way, that is... What is that? That is a secret cave chart. It shows you the locations of the uh, secret caves in the game, in, um, in the game, scattered around the great, scattered around the great sea. So if you ever need to know where a secret cave is, look and look, look through that chart. Anyway, what you can do in order to, uh, what what you can do to look for these tre to look for these treasures easily, is uh, you can. Look at that beaming lights up from the water, and you can also because the map is on is on the gamepad. You can look at the map, you can look at the map, and it'll tell you exactly where you're at compared uh, uh, compared to the treasure, and you can just use that as your guideline to know if you're on the if you're on the exact spot to fish for these treasures. In SD, it's it's a little bit more tedious because you have to keep pausing the game in order for you to know if you're in the right spot or not in order to uh, fish for these treasures. Which, of course, like I said, is a little a little bit more painful, but that's just how, but that's just how it works. So I believe we're on Shark Island right now. And we're about, and we've we've so far got tons of tons of rupees. As you as you might as you might have uh, remembered earlier, I had 900 rupees, which was quite which is very little. And then because we're getting and because we're getting we're gonna get a bunch of rupees at the at the end of this treasure hunting. Uh, I'm about to be I'm about to have I'm about to be really really rich. This is why rupees you there shouldn't you shouldn't really have a reason to. Uh, grind for rupees in this game because you get a ton, you get a ton of them like everywhere. So that's so that was Ice Drink Isle once again 200 rupees. Windfall Island's treasure chart is really interesting um, because <laughs> well this is I I like to consider this treasure to be the fu treasure chart because in the SD version instead of 50 rupees in this version. You get one rupee in the SD version. So this is this was the best, the best treasure chart in the whole game. Oh man, I loved it. <laughs> uh, I'm so glad that they changed it though, so that it's uh, 50 rupees in this one, so it's more more a little bit more valuable. All right, so this one, that, so, so this treasure that we got from the flight control platform, this one's an Island Hearts chart. The Island Hearts chart shows you all the islands that have pieces of heart, um, and they tell, and of course, on the they show you pretty much what uh, they they show you how many heart pieces there are on 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 that Island Hearts chart, which is actually pretty useful. So if you ever, so if you're on the hunt to getting for getting a lot of heart pieces in the game, uh, that can be a very useful chart to to look to look into. But at this point, I've pretty much collected every heart piece. Actually, not really. I am actually missing one heart piece um, at the end of this. At, at the end of this. Um, spoiler alert. Um, and uh, this, the last heart piece I got is actually pretty cleverly hidden, I would say. But anyway, enough of that. We got another heart piece from Bomb Island, and then we're about to get the light ring chart here in Cyclo Cyclops Reef. The light ring chart shows you all the um shows you these I don't I don't know what this is really. I think I think it has to do with showing off these glowing spots that you see in the water in the Great Sea. I don't I don't know for sure. But that's the light but that is the light ring chart if you want to look at it. So yeah, some of the some of the see, like I said, some of these some of these treasure chart treasures contain uh, can, can contain these special charts that you wouldn't otherwise know about until you fish for them. Uh, so I believe so now so I believe so I believe we got we passed over Spectacle Island at 200 rupees. Now we're on treasure chart number 23, located in Diamond Step Island. And this one is going to contain a piece of heart. 
All right, so so yeah, we're 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 getting a lot of heart pieces now, which is really which is really good. Because pretty soon, because there's a lot there's a lot of heart pieces from Treasure Charts, and pretty soon we're about to be we're about to be getting every single heart container, which is gonna which is gonna be really awesome. The next the next one is in Nor Northern Fairy Island. Which contains uh, 200 rupees, and you and this one is located in Forsaken Fortress. Yeah, even Forsaken Fortress has a treasure for you to find, uh, but this one isn't is not as is not as important. Uh, but as part of 100%, you do have to get all these treasures from the treasure charts. Uh, otherwise, the game doesn't cons doesn't consider it as uh, fully complete. Um, I think the game does a pretty well, 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 well done job at um, at, at, in, at telling you guys what at telling us what what is considered 100% what is considered not. Most of the games, most of the games do, do that now. Um, I, I'm pretty sure. Uh, fun fact: If you actually, oh yeah, here's the big octo chart that we got here in Northern Triangle Island. A big, doc, a big Octo uh, chart shows you the locations of the Big Octos, and they even show you what type of Big Octos they are, whether they have 4 eyes, 8 eyes, 12, or 12 eyes. And here, <laughs> uh, what I'm doing here is <laughs> I'm uh, taking a visit at the Northern Triangle Island where Din is located. I just took a nice look at Din. I will have to say, Din looks really pretty. I think all the oracles look really pretty in this game. Anyway, if you actually go back to the Forsaken Fortress, it is completely empty. There are no enemies in the Forsaken Fortress, and when you enter it during the daytime, you get to see what it looks, what the Forsaken Fortress looks like in the daytime. Because um, normally, because the previous two times I've entered Forsaken Fortress has always been nighttime, um, and it's. It's kind of... It kind of sucks how, how when you enter it, there's like, there's nothing. So pretty much at that point, at this point in the game, you have no reason to... Well, for that, you have no reason to enter the Forsaken Fortress, unless you want to uh, just take a look at it out of curiosity. Alright, so I believe this is the Mother of Child Isles, and um, we got... A total of 400 rupees from Starbelt, Ar Archipel Archipelago, I think that's how you pronounce it, and Needle Rock Isle, and we're about to get 200 more rupees here in the Mother and Child Isles. So yeah, we're getting rich. Pretty soon, pretty soon we're about to max out, because our maximum capacity is, is 5,000, and that's a lot. I am running out of breath as, I, as I'm narrating this, but here is uh, Popper Isle. And by the way, I'm, I am at the same time watching, at the same time uh, post commentating this. I am looking through, I am looking at a guide, so I can, so I can tell you guys where I am and what items the, these uh, treasure, treasures contain. That was Popper Isle. We got a piece of art from it, and then here is Forest Haven. Uh, for locations that you can simply warp to, I did not cut those out because. Um, I, because I either because those places have warping spots anyway. So this is the so, so we got the so we got ourselves another heart piece, and I believe for boating course no okay no, never mind there's another all right so boating course is nearby for Haven so I'm just gonna make so I'm just gonna make my way over here to to boating course. To get our to get to get the item he, from here, and interesting enough, boating course is not located in uh, the item located in boating course is not located in the boating course itself, where you just have to go past the starting line race for that thing. You know, you know what that is. But uh, anyway, so that's the Sea Hearts chart from the boating course. The Sea Hearts chart shows you where the heart pieces, which treasure charts are heart pieces, which 
in my opinion, is pretty useless. Because if you want to 100% the game, you might as well go for all the treasure charts anyway. So I don't, I don't, I don't know. But that's, but that's, but that's the sea heart. But that's what the sea heart's chart is. That was Five Star Isles. Now we're going to Eastern Triangle Isle Island. While I'm here, while I was here, I did forget to check out Furor. And I was gonna go take a look at all of the. Um, I was gonna go. I was gonna check out all of the oracles, so I could show you guys what what they look like. But I, I forgot to do that with Furor and Nairo. But eventually, I do go back. To eventually, I do go back to um, check the ch to check those oracles out. They they are pretty pretty looking. <laughs> I said pretty too many times. Here's the Isle of Steel. Some of these treasures, some of the, yeah, some of these treasures are located uh, are located near spots where it's easy to get hit, where like the enemies can, can interrupt you while you're trying to. Uh, fish for these treasures. So what I do sometimes is I just kill them to get them out to get them out of my way. Which I think is pretty. Which I would. So I, I think it's pretty. Wor I think it's worth it. So over here in Fire Mountain. Uh, so not not much. So you didn't miss out much. At, uh, during during what I was talking about, I got a total of, to a total of 800 rupees from Eastern Triangle Island, Island of Steel, Bird Peak Rock, and Fire and Fire Mountain. Yeah, here's another here's another 200 here's another uh, silver rupee, and I can't carry the c carry those amount of rupees. What I really what I liked about Twilight Princess, uh, well at least in the SD version of Twilight Princess, is that you can when you're maxed out on rupees. And you get another rupee from a treasure chest. You can actually, you can actually put the put the rupees back in the treasure chest, so that, you, so that if you ever need rupees, you can go back and get them later. Uh, they took that away in the HD version of Twilight Princess for some reason. Now, originally, I was gonna have either one or two guest commentators for this episode. But unfortunately, they couldn't make it, so I just so I'm on my own here, which is kind of a shame because I really because I I I, I don't really want to do this by myself when when I'm when I have to post commentary a long video like this. I already had to do that like several times when we were world exploring world exploring uh, through all these um, islands to check to get various items from them. So here's Headstone Island, and in Headstone Island you get yourself a silver rupee. Because, because, like, because here, because yeah, here I'm not, I'm not really. I, I ran out of, I ran out of interesting th things to talk about. But pretty soon we're about, pretty soon we're about to get, we're about to get another um, cool item here that doesn't contain a heart piece or uh, a bunch of rupees. First of all, yeah, this one's located in Four Eye Reef. And I kill all the enemies here because all the enemies were surrounding me, and I don't want them shooting bombs at me while I'm digging up this treasure. That would be really painful. And this one you get the Great Fairy Chart. The Great Fairy Chart shows all the locations of where the Great Fairies all are, uh, and that includes the Great Fairy for defeating the Big Octo. Uh, one of the big octos that give you that gives you a magic upgrade. Very useful. If you want to start upgrading your stuff, your bomb, your bomb and arrow capacity upgrade, your bomb and arrow capacities and rupee capacities, then you can. Then those great fairies are very useful. So we got a hundred rupees from Gale. Now the now here are the. Uh, tr now we're on the treasure charts that are exclusive to uh, HD, uh, as, because because as I said already, these these have been replaced by the by the five Triforce charts that the get that the game removed. And 
they are lo and and they are located in the same place that that they would be located in the SD version, except you get uh, except of course you get different items from them, such as uh, here in Gale Isle and Outset Island we got we got hundred we got an orange rupee from both of them, and then now we're on our way to uh, oh I did not get I did not get an orange rupee from Outset Island yet, but we're about to. There it is. All right, and then I make my way over here to Southern Triangle Island, uh, where for no Nairu is located. And oh man, look at this! Uh, that's that's I was in, I was inside the sea hat because the because I was surrounded by the sea hats as I was. Um. <laughs> Well, as I was uh, making my, as I was trying to get 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 that treasure, yeah, those sea hats were causing lots and lots of trouble. So I just, so I had to, kill, I had to kill all of them. Yeah, sea hats look look look, re look like really creepy enemies, in my opinion. I don't, know, I don't really like, I don't, I don't, know, I don't really like the looks of them. They just look really scary. There's Nairu. Nairu looks real. N Nairu looks pretty. Looks 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 pretty as usual. And then finally, here's Furore. I went back. I went back to uh, take a look at Furore. So there we go. Those are all. Those are what all three of the oracles look, look like. Fun fact: the pearls that they're that they're holding, uh, the symbols act are always like in front of the game. Uh, are always like in the front. Um, while like in the SD version, it's like stat the position of the the symbols are static. If that makes sense, I'm not sure if that makes that. I'm not sure if that makes that much sense, but yeah. So here, so here is the 45th treasure chart in uh, in Seven Star Isles. You get a silver rupee for it, and then finally the last treasure chart is located in Two Eye Reef. And this one, well, in order to get this, well. This one, of course. So yeah, of course. You have to since since it's located inside the reef itself, you have to deal with uh, bomb bomb ships and bomb cannons shooting at you. If you want to, if you you can kill them if you want. And with that, you get yourself a piece of heart. And that was the point where I, where I was like, wait, what? I didn't get all the I didn't get all the heart pieces. Where am I missing a heart piece? So I I was late. I was lazy, and I didn't want to waste too much time. And decided to look up, look up online to see what the last heart piece I was missing, because I swore I got all the heart pieces. And then when I look, and then when I finally looked at it, I realized that I missed one over here, in horse in horseshoe. No, no, Rock Spire Isle. Yeah, because so I went on my practice file and 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 decided to look and look look at which heart piece I was missing uh, after after looking up a guide. And then I real, and then, and then eventually I found out that what you have to do here is you have to destroy these bomb, these bomb ships right here. Yeah. So this is this is the second time that destroying these bomb ships is required if you want to get all, if you want to get everything here. So uh, you get two rewards for defeating both these bomb can, these bomb ships. One of them. Oh well, I failed. Well, I failed that one right there. I wasn't. I was not in the right spot. I guess. But there we go. Yeah, you can tell if you're in the right spot or not just from listening to the listening to the sound. But of course, since I have my I have my sound off, you guys can't tell if I was in the right spot. Uh, one useful tip that you're seeing that, that you're seeing me do occasionally is you're seeing me use the Wind Waker, uh, and that's and that's to make the and that's to make the the boat stop instantaneously, uh, which is. Uh, Faster, when well, you stop faster than uh, just manual, than just manually, than just stopping normally, which is very useful. And so with that, we got our final heart piece. So at this point you, of the game, you should have all 20 hearts. Very good. Uh, and then, and then I decided to show off the other award, and that is just an orange trophy. All right. So that's that. And with that, so that's gonna be it for this episode of the Legends of the Wind Waker. Next time. We are going to take on the final area. So see, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.